Okay, so this is our last video for George's Marvelous Medicine. Um, it is chapter 14 and 15 because um, Marvelous Medicine number four is very short. So I will do the two of them together um, and we'll see how the book finishes. So Marvelous Medicine number four. Back in the kitchen once again, George, with Mr. Cranky watching him anxiously, tipped half a pint of engine oil and some antifreeze into a giant stewing pot. Boil it up again, cried Mr. Cranky. Boil it and stir it. George boiled it and stirred it. You'll never get it right, said Mrs. Cranky. Don't forget, you, ju you don't just have to do the same things, but you have to do the exact same amounts as, those, uh, as the other things. And how could you possibly do that? You keep out of this, cried Mr. Cranky. We're doing fine. We've got it this time. You see if we haven't. This was George's marvelous medicine number four. And when it had boiled for a couple of minutes, George once again carried a cupful of it out into the yard. Mr. Cranky ran after him. Mrs. Cranky followed more slowly. You're going to have some uh, mighty queer chickens around here if you go on like this, she said. Dish it out, George, cried Mr. Cranky. Give a spoonful of the, to that one over there. And he pointed to a brown hen. George knelt down and held out the spoon with some new medicine on it. Chick, chick, he said, try some of this. The brown hen walked over and looked at the spoon. Then it went, peck. Ouch, it said. Then a funny whistling noise came out of its beak. Watch it grow, shouted Mr. Cranky. Ah, uh, don't be too sure, said Mrs. Cranky. Why is it whistling like that? Keep quiet, woman, cried Mr. Cranky. Give it a chance. They stood there staring at the brown hen. It's getting smaller, George said. Look at it, Dad. It's shrinking. And indeed, it was. In less than a minute, the hen had shrunk so much it was no bigger than a new hatched chick. It looked ridiculous. So the next chapter, the final chapter, is called, sorry, I'm trying to maneuver it with one hand here. So the final chapter is called Goodbye Grandma. There's still something you left out, Mr. Cranky said. I can't think what it could be, George said. Oh, give it up, Mrs. Cranky said. Pack it in. You'll never get it right. Mr. Cranky looked very forlorn. George looked pretty fed up, too. He was still kneeling on the ground with the spoon in one hand and the cup full of medicine in the other. The ridiculous tiny brown hen was walking slowly away. At that point, Grandma came striding into the yard. From her enormous height, she glared down at the three people below her and shouted, What's going on around here? Why hasn't anyone brought me my morning cup of tea? It's bad enough having to sleep in the yard with the rats and the mice, but I'll be blowed if I... if." I'm going to starve as well. No tea, no eggs and bacon, no buttered toast. I'm sorry, mother, Mrs. Cranky said. We've been terribly busy. I'll get you something right away. Let George get it, the lazy little brute, Grandma shouted. Just then, the old woman spotted the cup in George, George's hand. She bent down and peered into it. She saw that it was very, was full of brown liquid. It looked very much like tea. Ho, ho, she cried. Ha, ha. So, that's your little game, is it? You look after yourself, all right, don't you? You make sure you've got a nice cup of tea. But you don't think to bring one to your poor old grandma? I always knew you were a selfish pig. No, Grandma, George said. This isn't... Don't lie to me, boy, the enormous old hag shouted. Pass it up here this minute. No, cried Mrs. Cranky. No, Mother, don't. That's not for you. Now you're going against me, too, shouted Grandma. My own daughter trying to stop me from having my breakfast, trying to starve me out. Mr. Cranky looked up at the horrid old woman and smiled sweetly. Of course it's for you, Grandma, he said. You take it and drink it while it's nice and hot. Don't think I won't, Grandma said, bending down from her giant height and reaching out to a huge horny hand for the cup. Hand it over, George. No, no, Grandma, George cried out, pulling the cup away. You mustn't. You're not, you're not to have it.
Give it to me, boy, yelled Grandma. Don't, cried Mrs. Cranky. That's George's marvelous. Everything's George's around here, shouted Grandma. George is this, George is that. I'm fed up with it. She snatched the cup out of little George's hand and carried it up high out of reach. Drink it up, Grandma, Mr. Cranky said, grinning hugely. It's lovely tea. No, the other two cried. No, no, Grandma. But it was too late. The ancient beanpole had already put the cup to her lips and in one gulp she swallowed everything that was in it. Mother, cried, wailed Mrs. Cranky, you've just drunk 50 doses of George's Marvelous Medicine Number 4 and look what one tiny spoonful did to that old brown hen. But Grandma didn't even hear her. Great clouds of steam were already pouring out of her mouth and she was beginning to whistle. So you could see her whistling again. Something's starting to happen. This is going to be interesting, Mr. Cranky said, still grinning. Now you've done it, cried Mrs. Cranky, glaring at her husband. You've cooked the old girl's goose. I didn't do anything, Mr. Cranky said. Oh, yes, you did. You told her to drink it. A tremendous hissing sound was coming from above their heads. Steam was shooting out of Grandma's mouth and nose and ears and whistling as it came out. She'll feel better after she's, she's let off a bit of steam, Mr. Cranky said. She's going to blow up, Mrs. Cranky wailed. Grandma's tiny face... Oh, sorry, I skipped a page. Her boiler's going to burst. Stand clear, Mr. Cranky said. George was quite alarmed. He stood up and ran back a few paces. The jets of white steam kept squirting out of the skinny old hag's head, and the whistling was so high and shrill, it hurt the ears. Call the fire department, cried Mrs. Cranky. Called the police. Man the hoses. Too late, said Mr. Cranky, looking pleased. Grandma, shrieked Mrs. Cranky. Mother, run to the drinking trough and put your head under water. But even as she, she spoke, the whistling suddenly stopped and the steam disappeared. Then, that was off when Ma Grandma began to get smaller. She had, started off, she had started off with her head as high as the roof of the house, but now she was coming down fast. Watch this, George, Miss, Mr. Cranky shouted, hopping around the yard and flapping his arms. Watch what happens when someone had 50 spoonfuls of this one. Very soon, Grandma was back to normal height. Stop, cried Mrs. Cranky. That's just right. Stop there. But she didn't stop. Smaller and smaller she got. Down and down she went. In another half minute, she was no bigger than a bottle of lemonade. How do you feel, Mother? asked Mrs. Cranky anxiously. So you could see Grandma getting smaller and smaller. Grandma's tiny face still bore the same foul and furious expression it had always had. Her eyes, no bigger now than keyholes, were blazing with angers. How do I feel, she yelled. How do you think I feel? How would you feel if you'd been a glorious giant a minute ago and suddenly you're a miserable midget? She's still going, shouted Mr. Cranky gleefully. She's still getting smaller. And by golly, she was. She was no bigger than a cigarette. Mrs. Cranky made a grab for her. She held her hands and cried. How do I stop from getting smaller still? You can't, said Mr. Cranky. She's had 50 times the right amount. I must stop her, Mrs. Cranky wailed. I can hardly see, see her as it is. Catch hold of each end and pull, Mr. Cranky said. But then, Grandma was the size of a matchstick and still shrinking fast. A moment later, she was no bigger than a pin, then a pumpkin seed, then, then, you could see the picture here of Grandma in the hand getting smaller and smaller. Where is she? cried Mrs. Cranky. I've lost her. Hooray, said Mr. Cranky. She's gone. She's disappeared completely, cried Mrs. Cranky. That's what happens to you if you're grumpy and bad-tempered, said Mr. Cranky. Get medicine of yours, George. <laughs>
Great medicine of yours, George, sorry. George didn't know what to think. For a few minutes, Mrs. Cranky kept wandering around with a puzzled look on her face, saying, Mother, where are you? Where have you gone? Where have you gotten to? How can I find you? But she calmed down quite quickly, and by lunchtime, she was saying, Ah, well, I suppose it's all for the best, really. She was a bit of a nuisance around the house, wasn't she? Yes, said Mr. Cranky. She most certainly was. George didn't say a word. He felt quite trembly. He knew something tremendous had taken place that morning, but for a few brief moment, moments he had touched with the very tips of his fingers the edge of a magic world. And that is the end of George's Marvelous Medicine. I hope you enjoyed. I'm um, really glad if you followed along. Awesome. Um, I really enjoy Roald Dahl. He has lots of other books. The BFG, The Big Friendly Giant, Matilda, The Witches um, are just, just to name a few. I would really rec highly recommend them. I think he's great. Anyways, um, hopefully you enjoyed it.